recording in progress. That's better. Okay, so this episode of our masterclass is going to be about something that I love so much love not control. So it sounds kind of strange that love not control would be something that goes with yoga because when we talk about yoga, lots of people, not me, but lots of other people tend to use the word control a lot. Control your breathing, control your breath, control um, your body, control the asana. Da, 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 da. Uh-uh, not with me. I hate the word control. Um, for me, I find that word's just like really negative. So there's lots of other ways, but there's lots of other ways that we can describe uh, an element of control but in a positive way. But today we're going to focus on something that I have created called love, not control. Um, we're going to think about what it is. What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> we're going to think about why it's important for preschool yoga in particular and how you guys can utilize it within your class. So as ever, I have written notes to keep myself on track because otherwise I just go off on a tangent here and there. So we'll start off with what is love, not control. Um, it's very simple. It's very positive and very powerful when it's used. Um, and it can really impact a day life. Even. So let's think of it in terms of what we can control. So we can easily control a ball. Um, I say easily. <laughs> Some of us just may be like terrible at football or whatever, but let's think about we can control if we kick the ball or not. We can control where we kick the ball to go to if we want to get it in the net. Um, as long as there's not another person there, we can mostly get it in the net. So I like to think about control with regards to a ball. It's very easy to think of it in that way. It's something we can do. Bounce a ball, catch a ball. What it is hard to control and possibly even impossible to control is another person's feelings. And this really hit me when I first became a mum, uh, when I first had a baby. And I just thought, I've just, I've just got to love without any of this control stuff. Like, my baby does not sleep. I can't control that. I can't force him to sleep. I'm not going to let him cry because that's just not in me. Um, I've just got to love him. I've just got to love him through this and help him through this. And whilst I'm doing that, love myself and we will get through it. And that helped in so many different aspects of my parenting journey. Um, and I started to talk about it and teach it within my baby yoga and baby massage classes. And it was helping other people. And parents were coming back in the next week or so saying, like, oh, do you know what? I was really stressed out and I just thought, <sighs> Love, not control, love, not control, love. And it helped me. And I didn't lose my head or my rag or whatever. And we got through um, a situation. I can't believe it works. It's amazing. I'm definitely going to keep going with it, blah, 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 blah. So it's obviously not for everyone because everybody needs different things. But it did help a lot of people and it did help me. So I think it can help and be really positively impactful within your yoga sessions, your teaching, and maybe in your own life as well. Um, personally, oh, I've got a two-year-old. <laughs> and um, when I'm not using love control, not control, or we have a tougher day, when I am using love, not control, we have a much better day. You may be aware as well that my son is autistic. Um, he has high anxiety levels about a lot of different things. He also has demand avoidance tendencies. I cannot force him to feel a certain way. I cannot force him to do something. I cannot control him in any of those aspects. 
I can do is love him and through that love connect with him, help him to feel safe and guided. I think guided is really, really interesting word and for me language is very important. Guided allows for love, allows for connection. Guided allows for someone to to go their own way. Um, but having some positive influence from someone else, but it is ultimately their choice which way to go. So that's like me personally, what love control is, where it came from. Um, and I feel like, yeah, like I said before, it, it, it's going to be really great for you guys. So it's really about, just to summarize, so you get pad and pen. It's really about just in that moment where you feel you need to control something, where you feel like your ego is wanting to take over, like, I must get this done, this is going to be terrible if we don't do this, I failed because they haven't eaten their peas, I failed because I'm a terrible mum because my daughter wants to wear a dress tonight, every, to bed, sorry, every night. Um, like, oh, it, it doesn't, why are you trying to control that? It doesn't matter. Um, as long as they are safe and comfortable and um, with regards to the dress, <laughs> this is totally my daughter, also I dress every night. It's fine, as long as it's a cotton dress and it's breathable because she has eczema and it's not going to impact on her sleep. What does it matter if she's wearing a, day, a daytime dress? Like, who decides what's daytime and what's not? Like, it's fine, go for it knock yourself out have a win have a win with that and then later in the day or when you wake up in the morning you're going to feel better so that the things I need you to do are going to be a lot easier for us to do because you've already had a win so I got my this is mining my notes because I've already gone off on the tangent right so <laughs> when we're in that space when our ego wants to take over okay when we feel like we need to control something, even though we don't. When we feel like we need to win some kind of battle, and there's no battle. Um, when we feel like we need to dominate the way forward, when we, we don't. What we need to do is we just need to pause. And that pause may just literally pause. Or it might take a breath. Replacing our mindset, replacing whatever was there before with love. Okay? And I'm going to explain what love means for this. Okay? When we do that, the outcome is always going to be for the greater good. That ego has been taken out of the way. We don't need that in this situation. That's not going to help in this situation. What we need is something for the greater good. And this will be impactful within your classes because your ego can take over when you're teaching. Um, you want everybody to be doing X, Y, and Z. You want, every, you want your class to run so smoothly. You've had a vision in your head of how it's going to be. And maybe it's not playing out that way because there are humans in your class and humans have all different kinds of their own ideas going on. So in those situations, that's when you can let go of that ego and you can embrace love. And I'm gonna talk about that soon. Embrace love, go for the, the greater good. Because that's what yoga is all about. So like in yoga, we talk a lot about union, which I've spoken to you guys about. But also we talk a lot about um, doing something for the greater good. When you have got a decision to make, when you are at crossroads, which way do I go? Which way is going to impact upon myself, impact on the world around me for the greater good? That is the way we're going to go. That is what yoga is about. Making positive ripples sharing that creating that ego. it's not about the ego at all so that's where love not control comes into it 
Um, with regards to preschool yoga, this is important because kids are coming in, they're really young, they've got these big emotions, um, which I know as a parent, from a parent's point of view and from a yoga um, teacher, I know it can feel really overwhelming. It can feel really overwhelming for a parent in that situation because they all feel like everyone's looking at me, everyone's going to judge what I do next. Um, and what I do next might be calms my child down. Um, from your teacher's point of view, we want everyone to feel comfortable. We want, do you know what? We want them to feel like they can have a big outburst if that's what they need. They, they feel safe enough to do that in your class. Wow, if they do have a big outburst. And within this, I talk about how actually teaching about this to the children, with the children, can help them so that if there is a big outburst in class, it doesn't become a huge ordeal for everybody. It's just something normal. It's just someone having some feelings and that's okay. And I'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, big emotions coming into class. Something might have happened before on the way. Something might trigger them in class. It's so normal because we're dealing with really young children here. So it's important. Love, not control is important to help within that situation. It's important because it can help parents who feel feeling overwhelmed with things. Um, it's important because I feel it is part of yoga as well. And we are teaching yoga, we're teaching union and love. And um, it's something that parents can take away with them as well. It's not something we're going to ram down their throats. You don't have to talk about it in class, but the way that you conduct yourself, the words that you use, um, the way you embrace those situations, people may start to mimic what you're doing at home as well. People want to have someone to uh, gain inspiration from. So think of your classes as a chance to connect with parents, um, but not necessarily to tell them how to do things, but just to be a positive role model. Um, and also, with love not control, we can help children to start to explore it with regards to emotions, physicality, and social situations. So we've got three really important things that we can target through love not control in our preschool yoga sessions. Um, so I'm going to think about how we can do that through um, breathing. Um, you can use stories as well through activities and games and through those three areas that I've just spoken about that are really important. So let's start off with emotions. Okay. So this is a bit of a script that I've written for you to think about um, and to tweak so that when you talk it's natural for you so if you want to tweak this slightly go for it but keep the essence like the same so this is what I've written here so when we feel a big emotion inside our bodies inside our heads inside our hearts let's love ourselves okay I'm gonna repeat that when we feel really big emotion and it's inside our body and it's in our heart and it's in our head it's really easy to but let's just love ourselves instead and there's a really great way that we can do that because we can't make our emotions we can't make our feelings go away and we don't want them to go away because they're telling us something we don't want to shout at our emotions we don't want to scare them away we don't want to hurt them instead we want to love them and if we love them then they might start to feel a little bit calmer and if our feelings if our emotions feel a little bit calmer then 
they might be able to tell us. Oh. So like you could add that out, you could do that with a little puppet, you could do that with a teddy. I'm going to be doing this with my minis and sharing videos of it um, on my Instagram. So check out, uh, watch out for those sorts of things coming up as well, because they might help give you some inspiration on how you could use this little script um, in a creative way for your class and your children. Um, one way that we can do this physically with them is by doing the asana that I call a cuddle cave. Um, I'm not sure if I'm like going to be able to show you. Uh, let's just give it. I push the chair back here. But I've done this with her. Okay, so I can share that bit. Basically, you're going to sit on the floor, sitting on the chair. Imagine you're sitting on the floor. And we're going to wrap our hands around our legs. Now, little children can find it hard to do it this much. So they're probably going to have their legs there and things like that. And that's that. So what we're going to do is we're going to love ourselves. We're just going to breathe in through our nose. And we're going to breathe out through our mouth. Now, when we breathe out through our mouth, we're going to breathe out more love. More snuggy, huggy, lovely love. Try it on your hand. If your hand feels warm after you breathe, let's have a go. Ready? So breathe in from the nose and breathe out to our mouth. Does that feel a bit warm? My breath felt a bit warm and I sent loads of lovely cuddle hugs to my hand. Well, that's what we're going to do. And send it all to our body. And giving our body love, giving our emotions love. Are you ready? Okay. I'll tell you what, let's do it in three. One, two, three. I felt really snuggy. And you could get them to think about other things. They could whisper it to a parent or they could just think about it in their head. Now, another way that we can help ourselves to calm down is by tensing and then releasing the body. And we can do that again in our cuddle. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze and release or release. The squeeze mimics that feeling of anger, frustration, anxiety, intense. And releasing helps our body to literally relax. So, sorry, research that. So, what's happening is we're physically mimicking what we feel internally during those very difficult emotions so that we can actually shift ourselves into a much calmer space. So I'm going to do it with you. And um, so we're going to get back in touch with you then. I'm going to look super hunched up on um, this beautiful chair. So we can do it like this. I also do it with people with their hands. So whatever your class find best. So some really young children might find hugging like this difficult or if they have um, something that uh, means that they personally find it difficult, then they can do it like this. So what we're going to do is we are going to pretend that we're feeling really, really angry. Give me an angry face. Or we're feeling really, really worried. Oh, no. Okay. Oh. <laughs> So you pick one of those feelings to pretend to be. I'm going to pick my angry feeling. Oh, I'm so angry. Now, to help me give love 
to miss the angry feeling inside. I'm going to do this. Ready? I'm going to cover. Oh, angry, angry. And then I'm going to. Now this test do it now because that really helps give our body lots and lots of love. So as we squeeze, we're going to breathe in through our nose. And then when we let go, then we puff out our nose. Are you ready? You do it on three. You're so good at doing it on three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Squeeze and breathe in. Breathe out. Squeeze and breathe in. And breathe out and let go. And then breathe in. So my anchor feels all lots of love to it. So you're so angry. Your angry thing now feels a bit hard. What about yours? What does your feeling feel like? A bit calmer? If they're not a bit calmer, you could try doing that again. Or maybe. Try something else. One of the other things that we've practiced before. There might be something else that we've practiced before that works really, really well. I wonder what that could be. Maybe we haven't found your special thing. That's okay. And then you can go on to something. Now the rocking is a lovely and important part of all of that. Um, rocking can really help our bodies to feel a lot calmer, um, like babies that be rocked. I find, I just, I even before I had children, <laughs> I felt really like relaxed, but I was just sort of swaying or rocking, like just from side to side like this. So anything like that's really good um, and it can really engage the body to feel floaty and calm. Um, so that's with regards to the emotions. I'm just touching on that. There's going to be loads of other things that we can do around that as well and probably loads of ideas you guys will come up with and we can start to share each other's ideas. Right, let's move on and think about physical ability. Love, not control with regards to physical ability. So. In life, we can find things really tricky to do, and especially like with yoga, there's um, there's things that I cannot, there's um, asanas that I cannot do. One, my, I maybe cannot do them because of my umbilical hernia, so that I just can't do that pose, otherwise bad stuff's gonna happen. <laughs> um, and I could get really frustrated and angry that I can't do those things I can't even try to do those things I don't I love my body instead I don't try and control it I try and push myself into those things and then um suffer the consequences I just love myself and I think that's fine let's explore the things I can do instead um with regards to yoga as well there might be things that we just find really difficult to do like oh my goodness this is really hard. But the great thing about yoga is that it's about loving ourselves. Yeah, yoga, lots of things in yoga are really hard, but it's a journey. And 
we're working towards doing something. We're working towards achieving um, that particular asana, maybe. Or maybe that particular asana is one for like further down the road and we're going to build up with other asanas first before we get there. Um, we don't want to force ourselves. We don't want to try and control and force and push ourselves. Instead, it's about listening to our bodies, listening to our emotions and offering love. Um, loving ourselves um, and being happy to practice and to improve gently. And that is something that is, wow, like really important for children to learn. Because if they can learn that by yoga, like physically, a lot of children learn really well doing. So if they can learn this through yoga during preschool years, wow, that is going to help them when they get to school and when they're doing maths and that is just hard. Or when they're trying to spell things and they just can't remember how to spell that. Or they're doing science and something's just like, huh? Or whatever. Um, if they can understand, like, I just need to love myself through this and try and find a way that's going to help me as I practice and improve. And that's it. That's what life's about, isn't it? So that's a really important thing to think about love, not control from a physical aspect as well. Right. With regards to asanas, a great um, asanas uh, to help exploring this is the ones that I've noted down that have different levels. So, for instance, um, off the top of my head, spider pose has a lot of different levels. So, like level one is um, more of like just a little squat crouch type thing. And then level two is um, bringing the hand uh, background. And then level three is through and blah, 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 blah. So, there's different levels to work through. So, they are able to practice and they're able to see that they are taking little steps forward to reach their end goal. Um, with regards to breathing, a really lovely breathing exercise um, is closed ear breathing. Um, if that's just something that I call it. Um, so I've written down here, closed ear breathing to listen to love. So what you find is when you stick your fingers in your ears, you can hear your internal self more. So you can hear your voice sound a bit funny. <laughs> um, but also, so you can listen to your breathing. And when we breathe in a certain way, we're feeding our body with love. We're calming ourselves down. We're loving our body. We're acknowledging our body. We're acknowledging our emotions. We're acknowledging ourselves, our whole self. We are uniting our whole self. We are living yoga. Okay. So you could just get them to gently pop their fingers in their ears. Remind them to do it gently so they're not like ramming. And then just do your simple breathing. So we're going to put our fingers in. We're going to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. We're going to breathe in and out. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three. Can you hear your breath? Did you hear that? That's love. That's you giving your body. So let's move on to the social aspect of love, not control. So, oh my goodness, like little ones have got so much going on just in themselves. It's hard for them to understand anyone else around them. But I marvel at how much they actually do. I marvel how much my two year old. Um, can have super wild tantrums, super wild outbursts. But at the same time, on the same day, 
can be so connected and focused to another human being and trying to help them, trying to connect and help them through something difficult. I just felt like the two just not So there is that ability there. There is the ability to understand. There is the want to learn. Children are really interested in other children. They're interested in other people, other animals, and what is going on around them. They want to know more about it. So let's help them to learn and empower them as well. So I said at the beginning about if a child has a really big outburst in class and is really upset about something, it can impact all the other children as well and parents and the parent of the child that's getting upset. But if we've taught everyone, if we've spoken about it, if we've been really open about emotions, about love, not control, then what can start to happen is instead of fear, instead of panic or um, trying to think uh, like, uh, not labeling, but uh, like just, you know, that staring and you can tell they're not thinking of something positive it's like oh what is wrong with that person I'm like oh sort of thing instead of that coming through I'm sorry I just can't remember the word for that right now um love and kindness and compassion can come through instead um so not feeling afraid or alarmed at a situation that was in like alarm um about another kid's upset or outburst instead we understand it's just someone's feelings. It's nothing to be frightened of. It's just someone's feelings. And they just need to allow that feeling to come out so that they can love that feeling. And that feeling can be held and then start to calm down a bit. Like, or um, a bit like, it's really interesting because to Give the, fe give the feelings a, an identity can really help. Um, so it may be in your class that you want to um, talk about feelings as a person. We don't want to say he or she because obviously that can get really confusing to people, gendering feelings. Um, I said baby, but as soon as I said it, I knew that was the wrong thing to say because um, a lot of kids don't want to be called a baby. Uh, that has like stereotypically been used um, in a negative way, um, which I don't agree with, but it happens. So we don't want to say like, yeah, call it a baby, but it's something that we want to look after. Um, so I'm going to have a think about it and see what we can <laughs> call it. Or maybe you guys can think of something that we could um, create, maybe a character you can create or something. But um, yeah, we just need to give our feelings love and compassion. Just look after them, talk to them until they're ready to calm down. But they won't calm down unless we give them some love. So well, that's what we're teaching to get in those social situations as well. Now, great asanas, this is partner poses. And there's loads of those in the course you guys can look at, um, which they do with their parents. Um, or the guardian, whoever, whichever special adult is in class. So look up some of the partner poses. These are great because it really requires control to go and to just have faith in the other person um, and to connect with them and to love so that you achieve the pose. Um, Partner breathing as well. So you can do breathing whilst in the partner pose or other partner breathing things would be like blowing someone's hair. Can you move their hair? Blowing on someone else's hand. Um, there's yeah, loads of different partner breathing things you can do with pom-poms together, having a little um, race with the pom-pom. Um, yeah, lots of things there. So other activities that you might be interested to explore are things like co-creating games. So I've done lots of posts on co-creating on my Instagram account. Um, but when I talk about co-creating, I'm thinking about like yoga stories. So when you're using a yoga dice, 
and everybody gets a go. They roll the dice um, and you do whatever's on the dice. That helps to move the story forwards. So then it's the next person's turn, they roll the dice. So everybody's coming together. There's not one person who is in charge of exactly what happens in the story. You are all co-creating. You're all love together. You're united together in making the story. So that's a really good one. And anything that is along that line of co-creating together. Um, affirmations, mirrors are wonderful things as well for love, not control. Really getting children to connect with themselves, to give themselves love by looking in the mirror and saying some beautiful affirmations. Again, I've done a post on Instagram, which I can flag up to anyone. Um, on how to really do this like so simply and cheaply as well so this could be a lovely creative craft that you do at the end of one of your sessions and then you can send everybody home with their mirrors ready to practice a love button necklace this is something when I was writing this for you guys popped into my head and I am like envisaging you could do this with um, salt dough and they could do like a heart shape cutters or any shape cutters that you like and get them to put a fingerprint into it um, and then let it dry and then you could take it take them all back to for the next session for them to paint um, basically what i'm thinking of is if you put a um looking around for a pencil i don't think i've got one if you put a pencil in through the top of your salt dough uh, and then you can thread through that, you've got your shape, your thumbprint within the shape. So if it's a heart, it'd be there. If you're doing like an elephant, like do the thumbprint in the tummy or whatever. So what can happen is then the child can grab the necklace and put their thumb into their little imprint and press that. And as they press that, they can connect with their breathing, their love. Sometimes we just need a physical reminder, a physical thing to connect with, not just our bodies, not just ourselves, we need an outside thing. So that's where the love button necklace I thought could come into play. Um, and some children will love that and some children will be like, uh, no. <laughs> um, Personally, I'm a grown woman and I'm like, oh, to love button necklace, please. <laughs> um, right, so other activities you can do is parachute games. So you can pick up parachutes like super cheap um, on eBay or even second hand ones and make your own parachutes. Um, do parachute games where everybody is involved in holding the parachute together so you are united and nobody is taking control of a city, like. Obviously, you will be taking slight control because you're the teacher, but nobody is above anyone else or below or like anything like that. You are all doing the same thing. So those sorts of um, parachute games and songs are really good for love, not control. Another one, this is the last one I'm going to explore with you, is bubbles. So bubbles, um, as in the ones that you blow, these can be great with yoga. I use them in lots of different ways specifically for love not control i would say about using them yet you can get you know the really big um pots of bubbles and then it's got one wand so i would get one of those and um waft it around the room and invite the children to love the bubbles we can't control them we can't pick up a bubble and move it here because it will pop. We can't catch the bubble, it will pop. We can't push the bubble to a certain part of the room, it will pop. We can't be forceful with them. We have to be gentle and loving with the bubbles and then they will play with us. And then they might go where we want them to go. Who knows? How we do that is by using our breath. Okay? So we breathe in, and we breathe out and we puff. We puff our breath out onto the bubble and that will move it. We become the wind and we gently move the bubbles. So you could do that. You could get your bubble ones and you could say, 
let's try and move all the bubbles to that side of the room. Shall we have a go? They might not do it, but if we're really loving to them, then they might. Let's see how far we can get them to go. And just have a go. And I mean, like, they're not going to go behind you if you're breathing on them. So you're going to win here. You might not get all the way to the end of the room, but, you know, you're definitely going to move forward. So that's that. It's just like a really nice visual for them to see about, you know, if you do grab them, they're going to pop. You, you can't be forceful with the bubbles. You've got to be really gentle and loving. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So that's it for um, Love Not Control um, Masterclass. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm just going to really quickly recap. So in a nutshell, Love Not Control is about taking a pause, a step back, pause, shifting our ego out of the way and allowing love to come in and to go out, okay? I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, like I'm sure you probably do, I hope I haven't confused anyone, but if you do have any questions about anything, please get in touch. Um, I'd really love for everyone to be really clear about this. So do get in touch if you have any questions. Um, yeah. Happy to bring everybody. Bye.